Welcome to the Modular Clubhouse. I'm Jesper, and this is the ADAC 112 VC Looper and Granular Processor. So the ADAC 112 has a double role to play. So on the one hand, it's a, a, a voltage controlled looper. Um, and of course, we've seen loopers before. Uh, a couple of episodes ago, I did a uh, deep dive into the 2HP loop, which is of course a looper. And there are several other loopers out there as well. But the other role that this uh, module plays is granular processing. And granular processing and granular, well, synthesis might not be as well as known by the audience as looping might be so if you've got a looper you'll just have the same sample the same loop played over and over again and then you can do things like you can record over it sound on sound those kind of things but when we start to talk about granular synthesis and granular processing we first need to understand what a grain actually is and how you create those grains so a grain is essentially just a very small part of that sample or the loop that we were looking into. And what then happens is that that really tiny sample will be played with slight variation in the well actual parameters uh, that were that you was used to make it. So to actually create a granular cloud of sorts. And you can then use those grains that we've just created to play, well, you can play the actual melodies with it because in this case the ADEC 112 has a full preruptive input for the well, for the grains themselves, but you can do crazy things with it, and it just well, it's now becoming one of the well the staples within the modular synthesis arsenal, uh, because there are many well granular modules out there, and they've become very popular in the last couple of years. Um, so as said, I'm not going to do a full expose on all the capabilities of the ADEC 112. Uh, there are great videos already out there to which I'm going to link in the description below. Um, and for now, I would just say, well, hope you guys are going to enjoy this and hope you guys uh, uh, hopefully even pick up a thing or two about this module. And if you've got any questions, as always, just drop a comment in the uh, uh, below and uh, otherwise reach out to me. But for now, I would say, hope you're sitting down because uh, here we go. Bam, so there we have the ADAC 112, measuring at a, well, an Im a really impressive 45 HP. Um, so that is for both parts of the actual module. Um, so for those of you who haven't seen that in the first part of the video, you can actually move the, let's call it the patch bay, around the, the main module there. So you can have it on the other side, and theoretically you could even have it above or below uh, the main event there. Um, so on the actual patch bay, you've got inputs. So one thing that uh, that's always good to point out, it does have a stereo line in as well. So if you want to, well, sample uh, something from an, from another device, you can actually do so without having to worry about what kind of levels you want to use. You can just use stereo line level inputs. So here you've got CV control essentially over everything that you have here as well. And then you've got your outputs. So it is meant to be a stereo mo uh, module. So you've got left out, uh, uh, right out, mono out as well. And that's what we're gonna be using because I'm still just using a, well, <laughs> a two channel audio interface. Um, and you can have outputs there for the, uh, for the loop trigger. So every time the loop starts uh, over, you'll get the trigger out of that. And the grains trigger as well. So every time a grain triggers, you're gonna get a bit of CV there too. And you've got CV control over the playback. And that's something that I've really come to appreciate. So before we dive into uh, anything further, uh, keep in mind, I'm not gonna do a full demo of all the capabilities of the ADEC 112, there are great videos out there. Uh, Monotrail's done a great one, uh, and Omri's done a great one as well. I'm gonna l l link to those in the description below. But I just want to show you what I've learned over the course of the first weeks of actually playing with this. And you might find my patches interesting or maybe even useful or at the very least, hopefully educational. Um, so let's go over the rest of the um, actual controls there. So here you've got your um, 
your grain control here on the left hand side so this controls the position and you might be able to see that on the screen there the starting position of the grains within the actual loop that you've got uh, that can be well let's call it quantized to uh, one eighth of the uh, of the length of the uh, sample that you have or the loop as I should say uh, you can also do that in a quarter of the of the loop and you can also do that free form so you can actually have full control of where you want to start then you've got deviation so that actually means that you've got a well a built-in randomizer that you can indeed attenuate by this so i'm just going to keep that at zero for now uh, you've got similar controls about the grain size so again you can have it quantized to the um, to a fraction of the of the loop at one eighth or a quarter or three and you can have that again randomized then you've got your grain intermittency so how often does the, does the grain start or how long does it take between ending one grain until the next one starts similar controls grain direction I tend to keep this right there in the middle so then you have either grain starting to play forward or backward and you can of course then also make sure that you have probability for the actual repeating of grains and you can also just set it at the well the repeat mode there as well um, then grain volume similar things where you can have the deviation set up as well so I'm just going to keep that right there. Then you've got your, your um, controls over the number of grains you want to have active. So that goes from 0 to 12. And you can, of course, select the loop that you want to use. So you can have several loops stored in memory. Uh, but I think that the maximum is 5 minutes in total. Uh, and you can then just use this to select between them. Uh, then you've got your envelope control, preset selection, quantization, You've got your um, uh, your pitch for both the loop and the grain, so you can set that. And I'm going to keep both of them at zero, so they're going to be the same pitch as the actual recording. And why I'm doing that, that will uh, become clear later on. Then you've got your panning for your grains, so whether you want to have it, everything in mono or if you want to have hard panning from left to right. I'm going to keep it at mono because, as I said, we, we are a bit limited here that I'll only have a mono in to record this with overdub and you've got your volume so this is your dry volume so actually the um, uh, the inputs that you can hear back this is the loop that you can uh, that that's going to be playing back and this is the grain volume let's go all the way down there you've got some probability settings there the way how you want to record and play and here you've got your actual controls so you if you want to start a new recording record over the existing loop that you have play stop erase forward or reverse pretty straightforward um, so what I want to do is I just want to build a patch and explain a bit uh, what I'm doing and why I'm doing that so first things first I do need to clock my hermit to PAMS I've set that at 60 BPM to get a nice slow recognizable uh, loop going so I do have a sequence already loaded into Hermit and I'm gonna uh, play that on plats. And I'm using the, well, the, the, the rings setting. Uh, I know it's a staple of Eurorack, rings into clouds, um, but it is something that's, that's really nice if you've got that, um, that strings, the rings sound into a, into a looper or a, a granular processor that is something beautiful to listen to. So uh, why change a winning team, right? So let's grab the uh, the trigger there. There we go. And then I'm just gonna patch the output from this directly into the left in, which is of course normal to the right on the ADAC 112. So I'm then gonna patch the output, the mono output into my mixer and I'm gonna patch that into the Lich, which is currently running the um, the reverb, so that it does add a bit of color to it. There we go. So that being said, I think that we can actually uh, play something. So 
so nice and spacious recognizable uh, melodies of course so what we now want to do is we want to get a recording or a new loop which is as exactly one sequence long so for that I've got the eighth output here on PAMS there you go which is a modifier of divided by eight so every time the sequence starts it's going to be high so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to use this output first to trigger the new recording then remove it and put it in play if you trigger play it'll actually stop recording and actually just play what we have so let's uh, hopefully this is going to be uh, happening in one single go so it's low no recording it's high wait for it to go low low and play Perfect, and we've got a perfect recording there. So now you've got both the dry and the loop volume at max, so you hear both of them playing at the same time and they're perfectly in sync. That's one of the reasons why the pitch had to be at zero, because of course then it'll work. So you might experience a, a, a slight drift here or there, so I'm just gonna turn the, um, I'm gonna keep the dry open for now, but it might be that I have to turn it down later on. So. What we can now do is actually start to play with some of the, well, some of the grains. I can also save this and I can store this and I can load this uh, using the, uh, the selector and the screen, of course. But it's much nicer just to play with some grains. So I've got zero grains currently. Let me just set one single grain and turn the volume up. And you can see that it's currently in the quantized mode. Let me just turn the dry and the loop volume down a bit. And you hear the grain already playing and it's randomly playing forward or backward. I'm going to select another part of this. Let's uh, add some deviation to it. So you can actually see it on the screen which part it's selecting. Do some deviation on the length so you'll see some variation happening there as well. And let's add a bit to the intermediacy. So what I'm now going to do is I'm just going to switch both the playhead and the size to free mode so we can actually select exactly what we want to hear. We can really zoom in and grab exactly the, the part of the loop that we want. I know it's hard to see on the screen, but you've got great control because you do see the actual loop down, down there. You can just go through the actual play hole there.
And what we can now do, of course, is we can actually get another track here, another melody, and patch that into the full per octave. What I like to do is instead of using that, I like to use the well, the sample and hold on kinks to do that. So let me just grab the grab a trigger from there. Here you go. And it's then of course quantized in this case to uh, pentatonic minor. So I'm gonna add a bit of the loop volume there. So let's add a bit of a rhythm to it and I'm just gonna add a bit of reverb. So let's just grab this and I'm gonna use that to uh, to trigger some of the, something on maths. Let me just make sure that the Cables are not interfering with the screen there. So yeah, put's going in there. And grab the other outputs and I'm gonna use that to do something on the Ona. Grab the output from Ona and into the there we go. I'm just going to turn that down a bit so we uh, don't hear it that often. And I'm also going to grab another rhythm there for the Other one there, here we go. We can just play with this until we find something that we really like.
And if we have something that we like, we can actually just go into the menu and just store it to the SD card that we have there. And then you can immediately load it up. So even if you do run into any of your happy accidents, you can immediately store them and play them back just as you have them right now. But I just love exploring sound with this thing. I'm just gonna add some additional grains. So now we're at four grains. And how about we actually just turn it all the way up to 12 grains. It's going to get a bit noisy. So I'm just going to turn it back to 4 because I think that in this case that's a, that's a sweet spot. Let's add some randomization to this. So I'm just going to put the position deviation and the length deviation and the grain delay at the well, the noon position and do the same with volume as well. Another neat thing I like is if you Turn it all the way down to the octaves. It adds a bit of randomness to it, but you're never going to have anything really odd. Uh, you can also just do any of the other scales that, that come included there. As always, I prefer pentatonic minor, but that's just a, a taste thing, of course. So as I said, there's so much more that you can do with this great, well, behemoth of a of a module. It is absolutely worth its HP. Uh, but as again said, keep in mind it's 45 HP, so you do need to have the room for it. Uh, but it's absolutely worth it. And um, I don't know yet how this stacks up to any of the other uh, popular granular modules like uh, Morphogene or beads or even clouds because I haven't tried those yet but um, I'm gonna try and get my hands on, on those as well and I'm gonna be doing a full uh, granular comparison but um, I'll keep you posted on my progress there so for now I would say let's uh, just uh, dream away and let's go back to the studio all right cheers
So I truly hope you enjoyed this video on the ADAC 112 VC Looper and Granular Processor. I've really enjoyed working with this module uh, over the course of the last couple of weeks and I still get this feeling that I'm just scratching the surface of what's actually possible with it. So do expect a lot more videos on this module going forward. Uh, but if you've got any suggestions, any questions, any advice or recommendations, uh, just drop a line in the comments below, drop me a line at jesper at the modular clubhouse.nl or as always for everyone, uh, join the Discord server. We've got a great bunch of people there and we've got weekly meetings with Eurorack makers, Eurorack influencers or other interesting people in the Eurorack sphere. So uh, it really pays out to, uh, to join and you don't need to be active there. You can just lurk if you want, but uh, give that a try, please. And I also want to uh, add a bit more attention to the uh, to the Patreon as well. So if you do want to support the channel, if you enjoy these kind of videos, uh, please consider becoming a patron on Patreon. And um, the link is going to be in the uh, description there as well. So for now, I would say, well, please, everyone stay safe, stay healthy. And I hope to see you for my next video. Cheers.